If there's one thing I've learned about nerds over the years, it's that they love a good crossover. Oh my god, this character from that franchise is interacting with this character from another franchise. John Cena! It's like shooting fish in a barrel with these people. And like any good form of nerdy entertainment, video games have seen some pretty bizarre crossovers over the years. Mario meets the Rabbids, Dante showing up in SMT, Kratos playing golf, and whatever the hell Kingdom Hearts is. But hands down, my favourite will always be that strange time in the mid-2000s, when Metal Gear Solid and Ape Escape joined forces to bring us two very weird crossover minigames. Starting with MGS3 in 2004, Snake vs Monkey is a fun little bonus mode where Snake is pulled away from his vacation to capture the Ape Escape Monkeys. It's typical Metal Gear gameplay, but instead of sneaking from one area to the next, the player has to hunt down the apes and snatch them up as quickly as possible. The following year, Sony's Japan studio would continue the crossover with Metal Gear Solid in Ape Escape 3, a fully fledged Metal Gear Solid clone where you were sent in to rescue Snake from the hands of Monkey Ocelot and his group of terrorist apes. It's a very cheeky send up of the MGS series, but the stealth gameplay is so faithful to the franchise that it's actually got me itching to replay those games as soon as possible. I'm a big fan of both the classic Metal Gear Solid games and the Ape Escape franchise. May God rest its soul. They were two of Sony's brightest stars during the PS1 and PS2 eras, and replaying these minigames today might just remind you how good that whole era of PlayStation really was. I can't find any sort of information about why Konami and Sony decided to do this, but I sure am glad they did. So, grab a banana, crack open the calorie mate, and join me as we take a look at this very silly crossover. Out of the two minigames we'll be looking at today, Ape Escape 3's Metal Gear Solid is definitely the most interesting and entertaining, so let's start there. To unlock this bad boy, you'll have to beat the main game's relatively short story mode, and then purchase the minigame from the hub world. Great game by the way. Most of the love usually goes towards the original Ape Escape on PS1, thanks to its amazing music and the innovation of its dual analog control scheme, but looking back now, I think Ape Escape 3 might be the best package in the series. So we boot up the minigame from our hub world, and immediately we're greeted with this title screen that's goofing on Metal Gear Solid 3. Why not just Monkey Gear Solid? Well, apparently the word Messel is actually meant to be a mashup of the words Metal from Metal Gear, and Saru, the Japanese word for monkey, with the original Japanese title for Ape Escape being Saru Get You. As someone whose experience with Japanese culture is mostly limited to wearing black man underpants, this title confused the hell out of me as a child. Professor, can you hear me? Who's that? You caught me doing the laundry. All these darn sheets. Opening on a codec conversation between Colonel Campbell and the Ape Escape Professor, we learn that the two of them are actually old high school buddies. Long story short, a terror cell of specially trained monkeys have stolen the latest version of Metal Gear, and they're threatening to launch it unless their demand of 10 billion bananas is met within 72 hours. Naturally, Snake has been sent in by Campbell to defuse the situation, but after losing contact with him during the mission, Campbell enlists the help of the Professor to help find Snake and destroy Metal Gear. The solution? download Snake's battle data into the helmet of one of the Peepo apes and send him in. So Peepo Snake is dressed up in Solid Snake's sneaking suit from MGS2, sent into the field, and it's not too long before he's contacted by the real Snake sending out a distress call. Unfortunately, neither David Hayter or Paul Eiding reprised their roles as Solid Snake and Colonel Campbell, but honestly, I think their replacements do a pretty decent job. The voice of Snake is even done by the English actor for MGS1's Vulcan Raven. This is Snake. Made it to the elevator yet? Ooh, Kiki. Impressive. You're faster than I would have thought. Guess you've got some talent. Ooh, Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> you sound like me. I'm not too sure why David Hayter wasn't brought in to do the voice of Snake, especially considering the Japanese version of the game features Snake's actual voice actor for that region. It's not the end of the world, but. Sign of things to come, hey, David. Jumping into it now, and immediately we realise that this is way more than a silly little minigame. It's a real labour of love that actually manages to make you feel like you're playing a Metal Gear game. You've got rations, fixed camera angles, alert phases, cardboard boxes, first person aiming, a soliton radar, and most importantly, the iconic animation for peeking around corners. It's all here, with the only difference being that Snake is a whole lot hairier than usual, and the apes are even stupider than the genome soldiers. Unlike the platforming action of Ape Escape 3, stealth is obviously the name of the game here. We've got to sneak by groups of monkeys, activate some switches here and there, 
and in true Metal Gear fashion, fight a giant boss every now and then. If you're spotted by one of the guards, you're obviously going into an alert phase. But instead of these countdowns lasting about a minute, here they only go for about 10 seconds. Makes sense, I wouldn't want to stand around looking at this buffoonery for more than a minute either. And what with Ape Escape being a kids game and all, Snake's regular arsenal has had a bit of a simian makeover. Instead of Snake's SOCOM pistol with a silencer, we now have a tranquilizer gun shaped like a banana. C4 takes the form of watermelons that can be placed and detonated, with the hand grenades now being transformed into exploding pineapples. Something that's almost definitely a reference to that line from the beginning of MGS1. Uh, there's one sentry on the left, and one on the right. They're armed with five five sixers and pineapples. For the most part, I think it's pretty fun to play. And if you're familiar with the classic MGS games, all this should feel very familiar to you. The apes are a little too sensitive to the sound of your footsteps, but maybe that's just because my man can't stop stomping around like this. After moving through some very Shadow Moses looking environments and fighting a boss with our pineapples, all of a sudden we find ourselves in an old Japanese castle. I don't remember any of those from Metal Gear, so it seems like from this point on they just started reusing levels from Ape Escape 3. It's kind of a letdown considering how much effort went into making everything else feel so authentic, but it's not like this is suddenly breaking my suspension of disbelief or anything. About halfway in, Peepo Snake will be able to rescue monkey hostages by blasting through these cracked looking walls. Fans of MGS1 should recognize this as a callback to using C4 to rescue the head of arms tech, Kenneth Baker. This monkey looks like the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, and they even made each of these hostage rooms look like the prison cells on Shadow Moses. If these references are starting to bore you, well I'm afraid we've still got pages of this to get through. So too bad. After chatting with Snake a few more times over Kodak and destroying some computers on the beach, we end up fighting another mech and pushing onwards to rescue Snake from Monkey Ocelot. Whether this version of the character is meant to be Solid Snake or Big Boss is sort of ambiguous. He's got the character model, Kodak portrait and jungle fatigues of Big Boss, but then again he's also friends with Colonel Campbell, which would mean this is Solid Snake. Obviously it doesn't matter, but it is pretty cheeky of them to just smash these two characters together. Finally, after sneaking through the Wild West and destroying Metal Gear, it's time for the final showdown with Peepo Ocelot. It's not quite as graceful as the fight between Old Snake and Liquid Ocelot on top of Arsenal Gear, but it was nice of them to let CD Projekt Red do the animation work. With the world safe for another day and Snake released from the clutches of Ocelot, Snake congratulates his new primate partner on a job well done. So you're an agent, huh? Sure are one brave little monkey. Pretty sharp eyes you've got there. Our pair of heroes once again head their separate ways, with Snake confident that this could be the start of something beautiful. And that's Metal Gear Solid, a great way for any MGS or Ape Escape fan to spend an afternoon. As a kid, this was actually my first real exposure to the Metal Gear Solid series. Before Ape Escape 3, I only sort of knew about those games from websites and magazines, and it all looked a bit too confusing for my dumb little brain. And that's fair enough, I barely understand this shit as a grown man. But if this was Sony and Konami's bizarre way of introducing a new generation to Metal Gear, well, it sure worked on me. And after thoroughly enjoying my time with Metal Gear Solid, I knew I had to see what the real deal was all about. So I went out and spent my allowance on a copy of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. And what do you know, that brings us to the second minigame we'll be talking about today, Snake vs Monkey. <laughs> Snake vs Monkey is a time attack minigame where Snake is dropped into a map from MGS3 and ordered to capture all the apes within that area as quickly as possible. But before Snake can capture an ape, he's got to subdue them with CQC, flash grenades or a tranquilizer gun called the Monkey Shaker. The chase to find all the monkeys in any given level is decent fun, but the real charm of this mode comes from spying on what they're all up to before you snatch them up. You'll find monkeys hanging from trees, putting on concerts, answering the call of nature and sometimes enjoying a bit of private time. Some of them could be a bit tricky to find, but then you've got a guy like this who just ain't with it yet. Two of the levels even featured the first appearance of Metal Gear itself, a full year before we'd see it in Ape Escape 3. Don't know about the names of these levels though. I mean, Ape Fear and the Apes of Wrath, yeah, right, it's pretty good. But Gone with the Apes? They didn't even try to make that one rhyme. If you manage to beat the high score on every level of Snake vs Monkey, you'll be able to use the banana camouflage back in the main game. The other unlockable you'll get is the monkey mask, which looks like something you'd put on to scare your mum after she comes home with the shopping. Unlike the other minigame, there's not really much more to say about this one. It's funny to see Snake chasing monkeys, I like the monkeys, and I think it's funny that Konami put this in there. 
They could have done a whole lot more with it, but whatever. It's Metal Gear Solid 3, a linear single player action game already full of secrets and replayability. I do like this radio conversation at the start though. Colonel Campbell radios up Snake to tell him he's cutting his vacation short for an important new mission. And man, he is just not having it. Well, it's not quite a hot damsel in distress, but it is a rescue mission. Rescuing who? Apes. What? It's fun to hear Snake and Campbell argue over characters from a children's computer game, and it's also the only time we hear Paul Eiding in all of MGS3. So yeah, once again we're back at it with these weirdly anachronistic versions of Snake and Campbell. To unlock Snake vs Monkey in the original version of Snake Eater, all you've got to do is beat the game and select it from the menu. But for the expanded re-release of the game, MGS3 Subsistence, Snake vs Monkey is moved to the second disc of the package along with the rest of the extra goodies, meaning you can just play it straight away. I can't imagine having to play this minigame with the fixed camera from that original version, so I'd recommend everyone jump straight into the re-release if you're looking to play this. The subsistence version also features two levels that were originally exclusive to the European release of Snake Eater. While yeah, it may be true that Australia and Europe had to play games several months later at a worse frame rate and with no art on the spine of the case, it was the little victories like two extra levels that made it all worth it. Hope you enjoyed our sloppy seconds in North America. Metal Gear Solid is obviously the more interesting experience of these two, but honestly I think both are worth checking out if you're a fan of either franchise. If you're looking to play Snake vs Monkey or Metal Gear Solid on modern hardware, well, I'm afraid it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Despite being one of Sony's core franchises from the late 90s to the mid 2000s, the main Ape Escape games never got bundled together in a HD re-release like Sly Cooper or Jack and Daxter. For the most part, these games have just been left to chill on their original systems, which really sucks, because even outside of the Metal Gear stuff, I think Ape Escape 3 is one of the best games Japan Studio ever made. Ape Escape 2 did make its way to the PS4 through some wonky PS2 emulation, but sadly they never bothered with the third game. And what with the Ape Escape series having a bit of a cult following here in the West, buying this one off eBay could be pretty pricey. Metal Gear Solid 3 would eventually get a great modern remaster with the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, but unfortunately for us, all the Ape Escape stuff is totally missing from those modern ports of the game. Probably due to the fact that the HD collection also came to Microsoft's Xbox 360. With all that in mind, you've got two choices for playing these guys. Grab a PS2 and enjoy them on there, or alternatively, emulate these games through PCSX2. Oh yeah, PCSX2. A wonderful piece of software we've been stuck with for the past, oh I don't know, almost 20 years. On a Ryzen 5 3600, I found that Ape Escape 3 ran uh, decently well, definitely playable. It's got some glitches in the cutscenes and the frame rate seems to tank a bit during an alert phase, but it gets the job done. MGS3 on the other hand, well you might need a fairly beefy rig for that one. And even then, most of the shadows don't display correctly unless you go into software mode and suffer through some massive performance dips. I'm sure there'll be some dork out there who will see this and say, Ugh, works perfectly on my machine, have you tried taking the keyboard out of your ass? Normally I wouldn't stand for such disrespect on this channel. But given the amount of settings there are in PCSX2, I'm all ears if you manage to get these games running better than I did. Gotcha, gotcha. All done. Yes. So there you have it. The fabled Ape Escape meets Metal Gear Solid crossover of the mid 2000s. After playing through both these mini games and thinking back to all the references in both of them, I think my big takeaway from making this video is just how much I love and miss Metal Gear Solid and Ape Escape. I'm prepared to face the consequences of my betrayal. What are you- Hmm. What the- You're a man? Metal Gear Solid sort of went off the rails after 4, and smaller Japanese games like Ape Escape are no longer a priority for Sony. But man, the classic Metal Gear games and the mainline Ape Escape games still hold up. With Hideo Kojima no longer having much of an interest in the franchise, and the storyline already being hopelessly complicated, it's probably best for the MGS series to chill out for now. But for those very naughty monkeys, well, another Ape Escape is probably the only thing that could get me to buy one of those enormous Sony air purifiers. And what do you know, that's all the time we have for today. As always, I want to say thanks to my mum, and the boys, for making it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks again, and I'll see you when I see you.